Watercolour pencils for realism. Today I'm going to show you seven ways that I use watercolour pencils to get realistic effects in my own work and they're easy enough for beginners. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here my name is Michelle and on this channel you'll find all things watercolour as well as drawing, mixed media, even a little bit of business and motivation for artists too. Please do consider subscribing. If you click the bell icon you'll get notified every time I have a new video for you. I make at least one free video a week here on YouTube on a Thursday with extra content for Patreon subscribers. Now in my last video I gave you a basic overall guide to using watercolour pencils and told you exactly what they were and how to use them. If you missed that one don't worry I'll link to it at the end of this video but you'll still be able to understand what's going on in this video even if you are a complete beginner. So I'm going to be showing you seven different ways that I use watercolour pencils to get realistic effects in my paintings. Now at times in this video I'll be working on dry paint, sometimes I'll be working on wet paint, but if you don't use watercolour paint, if you just use watercolour pencils or if that's all you've got or that's all you've used so far, you can still do all of the techniques in this video. Instead of putting down wet paint first, what you would do for example is sketch a layer of watercolour pencils and wet that first. So you can use these techniques whether you're doing painting and working sort of with watercolour and watercolour pencils at the same time, but you can equally do all of these techniques with pure watercolour pencils. So let's get started and look at the first one. So one of the best things you can use watercolour pencils for is to neaten up edges. You can do this by working on a dry area that perhaps didn't dry as smoothly as you wanted along the edge, or you can do this straight into wet paint or wet watercolour pencil. Let me show you how it's done. You can also use this technique for things like adding darks at the edge of an area or adding a little bit of shadow. So I've painted a leaf here and you can see I haven't been too neat with it. It's dry but the edge doesn't look very good at all does it? So what I've done is I've found a watercolour pencil that's closest in colour to my leaf here and what I'm going to do is just go on top of this dry leaf and just take this around the edge like this. I'm just filling in any areas that should be a little bit neater. What I'll do then is I'll take some clean water and I'm going to paint on top. Now I'm not going to just go around the edge like this because that would just leave a line. So I'm going to take this water all the way across. So we are getting a little bit of an outline effect but we've got a much neater edge to our leaf. Like so. Now this leaf was already dry. You can see it looks much better now but I can also do this whilst I'm painting. So if I go straight on and do a leaf like this Again, I've not been very neat with this. Perhaps I'm new to painting, I don't have much control over my paintbrush yet. And I can go in now and neaten this up whilst it's still wet. I'm gonna use a different color this time. So this one's a little bit lighter and brighter. So I can take this in. And do you see I'm almost spreading the paint with the edge of the pencil? And you want to go a little bit into the leaf so that it doesn't look like you're outlining it too much. We can get a nice neat effect on here. I can even go in if I want to darker in places and actually add a little bit of something like shadow onto this leaf. And in order to smooth it out a little bit I can go on with clean water or if I want to I can take another layer of paint on. and start smartening up my leaf. One of the most exciting ways of using watercolour pencils for detail is when you're painting someone's eyes. So you can add a real sense of detail and depth and colour to the iris of someone's eye. You can even use the watercolour pencil to neaten up the black pupil area. So let's have a look at that next. So I've started drawing and painting an eye here. We need a little bit of detail in this blue area. We also need to sharpen up the edge of the black area, make it a bit stronger. Just like we sharpened up the edge of our leaf, we can do the same in here. But before we do that, I'm going to go in, put a little bit more color in this eye. So I know some eyes have sort of different colors in. My own eyes are sort of a, a sludgy green and they've got this kind of gold area around the middle. A lot of people have this in their eyes. They have 
some kind of starburst around the middle. You can also get lines coming out from the middle. And we're going to put some water on this in a moment so it'll look a little bit more natural. So I've picked a blue here that's quite close in colour. We could also, if we wanted to, get a little bit of a rim around this eye here. That looks quite nice, doesn't it? And I think I'll add some of the blue as well, so those colours will sort of mix together. So let's put some water on now. And we can just start getting everything blending together quite softly. So that's looking really lovely and I can continue to work on it. So I could get a darker blue, for example, and get some stronger lines happening here. I can keep working onto this eye until I get all of the characteristics that I like. I can go back in with some more of this bright colour in the middle here. And I can continue to use my paintbrush to spread and soften where I want to. And look at the lovely detail that I'm getting in this eye so much quicker than just using paint. I'm now going to take my black and really add some definition to the centre there. Now if you're doing this, I suggest you let that first layer dry just for ease of filming that I'm going straight in now. If you let it dry first, you'll get an even crisper line around that black area. And I can just spread in and we're getting much more drama into our beautiful eye. So have you ever painted a seashell with tiny little lines on or a rock with a fault line, a crack on it perhaps? Or one of those petals that has tiny little lines along the centre or maybe radiating out from the middle of the petal? It can be really fiddly and time consuming putting these on with a tiny brush. It's so much faster and easier to do it in watercolour pencil and you don't even have to wait until the first layer has dry. In fact, it looks better if you don't. So I've got a seashell here and a petal. I would imagine this to be something like a hydrangea petal, but there are many other types of petal that have, uh, have lines on as well. I'm going to take one of my watercolour pencils. So I've got this one here, looks a little bit blunt. I'm just going to sharpen this. And what I'm going to do now is put a second layer of paint on. So these sort of petals sometimes have a little bit of green on. So I'm going to mix myself a bit of bright green paint and I'm just going to pop this on. I'm going to take water right across the area however because I don't want hard edges to dry like this. So I'm going to rinse my paintbrush and then just take some water across. You can add any other colours in at this point. I could add a little bit more dark pink along this edge here if I wanted to and just start building up that petal. Now while it's still wet I'm going to take this very fine point here and go in and get some lines on. Of course you could use any colour that you feel is appropriate for whatever it is that you're painting. Now if you've bought one of the uh, cheaper sets of watercolour pencils and you find that they just don't dissolve very well, actually those type of watercolour pencils can be even better for this because you have more control over them. So don't throw away your cheap pencils and what I'm going to do now is put a little bit of more detail onto this seashell here. So um, what should we do? Let's get a little bit of yellow ochre here. I'm just going to put some water on again so I don't get hard edges. So just getting that sort of little bit of yellow slightly concentrated around those lines there. I'm going to go in now with a watercolour pencil. So let's try this one here. And this is sort of a uh, brick red colour and not only can we get these fault lines in and I wouldn't necessarily have drawn these in pencil it's just so that you can see and you can then start working out from there and getting all sorts of detail on your shell so you can see how fantastic these pencils are for adding those details in and you can continue to work up in layers if you want to we could put a little bit more 
dark around the outside edge. We could work back into these areas we've already painted here, put a bit more dark in here if we wanted to. And see how effortless it is to start getting these detailed effects. I can of course use more than one colour pencil if I want to and start really ramping up the detail on this seashell. At this point in the video, as always, if you're enjoying this video and getting some value from it, can I ask you please to uh, click the thumbs up button, the like button. It really does help my channel to grow. It helps to push my videos out to more people. If you like, share, subscribe, or leave me a nice comment, it will enable me to teach more people how to paint and draw. Now, you may have noticed that when you lift a tool off of your paper, whether it's a paintbrush or a pencil, you get sort of a tapered line. So we're going to take advantage of that next, that linear effect that we've already looked at with watercolor pencils and the tapering effect to get some beautiful, realistic textures such as fur and hair and even grasses in landscapes. So I've painted a soft area here of a little bit of a sort of fur type color and it's dry. Again, if you want to know how to do these soft edges, other videos are available on my channel. What I'm going to do now is take a selection of colors over the top. So I have, for instance, got this one here, which is also a soft gray. And you want to be going outwards with this. Now I do have a video on my channel about painting fur and I would generally combine this watercolor pencils technique with other techniques such as a dry brush and even sometimes using a little bit of white paint. It's not often that I use white paint, but this is actually a very good use for it. Got a little bit of a black pencil here as well and coming up like this and starting to layer. And you'll notice if you're painting any kind of animal that there will be areas like this where you can see every individual part of the fur, but then there will be other areas that are perhaps softer or in shadow. So what you can do then is take your brush and blend those areas. You can also, if you want to, you know, almost do this in layers. So you can do this for the first layer and then you can go on top again. And you can also, rather than having a hard edge finishing like that, you can get your watercolor pencil and then sort of drag the water outwards so that you don't get that hard edge of shadow ending there. It will sometimes take four or five layers to get the exact effect that you want. But you can see how fantastic it is for fur, equally as good for hair. Remember to do your hair or your fur in the direction that it's growing. And hair and fur tends to grow sort of almost in clumps. So you would have, for instance, you know, one area like this. And then you might have another area like this. And you start to build up in areas like that. So you get that overall look to it. Like I said, you could just wet all of this area and then go on top. You can just keep working up wet and dry until you get the effect that you want. Now, this linear technique also works really well for landscapes and for painting grasses. So let's put some green down like this. This is just a bit of green that I've got in my palette. And I want to show you how you can paint into your landscape foregrounds and just get some grasses and things growing. So you might have grass in the foreground. That's not a very natural color, is it? It's just one I've grabbed. Let's find another one. I think these ones are all quite bright here. You don't have to rely just on greens for grasses. You often find browns and ochres because some grasses have usually died. So you can start getting these grass effects. I've used these in so many of my landscape paintings. And it doesn't have to be large grass in the foreground like this. You might have an area that's quite distant and you might just have, you know, you can just start working in little ideas of little areas of grass with perhaps just a few little blades showing like this. And you'll notice again that I'm going upwards and outwards. You always want to be going up and out. What you don't want to do, I'm going to show you how to do it wrong here, is you don't want to go downwards like this. Look at the difference it makes. Look how stubby and unnatural my grass looks there compared to if I go upwards and outwards. 
So another fantastic use for watercolour pencils is to get areas of pattern and you can get them painted really, really quickly if you've ever painted something that has a grid on or stripes or dots or even something like animal fur with patterns on. And in this case, I'm going to show you how to paint the centre of a flower with little circles in the middle. So anywhere that you've got large areas of pattern, you can do it much more quickly and easily and much more natural looking actually than you would ever do it with a brush. So for this next one, let me do the base layer in watercolour pencil so that you can see that these techniques can be used for either paint or pencil. So just going to lay down some yellow here and put a little bit of water on it to turn it into paint. So we've got a daisy here. Just activate that watercolour pencil. And then whilst it's still wet, I've got a couple of green pencils here, dark green pencils and uh, we'll have a little go with these. What we're going to do here is start getting those centre details in. So again the pencil will bleed slightly but that's just going to give a more naturalistic look. I might go into the darker pencil just as I get to the outside edges like this. Being careful to make sure that I get those shapes kind of elongated so they're laying slightly flat. The other thing I can do is that as I get to this outside edge, I can actually take the brush across in a moment and make a bit of shadow around the outside. Let's just fill this area in. So if that looks a little bit too stark, I could just take a damp brush and just activate that pencil a little bit more so that we get a bit of shadow around the outside. Sometimes with this sort of flower centre you get a little bit of a dip in the middle as well. We can put that in if we want to. I would um, generally have more petals than this of course and I would even consider going in and you know getting some of those areas maybe here sort of look between the petals here. You can start getting some of those areas defined as well with your watercolour pencil. So sometimes when you're painting, you need an area with tiny speckles on. This could be something like a flower petal. Equally, it could be a beach or just somewhere where you need lots of lots of speckled texture. Now, you can use a toothbrush to do this. You can splatter, but splattering isn't always that controllable and you get very, very uh, distinctive circular marks. What about if you want something that's a bit more square, a bit more natural looking, a bit more uneven? I'm going to show you a special technique that you can use with watercolour pencil that's going to get you really, really realistic speckles. I use it all the time when I'm painting hydrangeas, but there are lots of other uses for it too. So I've started painting some hydrangeas here. I'm gonna get some speckles sitting on them. If you've ever looked at hydrangeas, you'll see they have these little speckles all over them. And they're not perfect circles, actually. They're all different shapes. Some of them are little long shapes. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scrape this watercolour pencil so that it falls onto the paper. But if I do that on dry paper, it won't stick. So I'm going to wet this area first. And remember that the little speckles will only stick where the water is. So you don't want to get any of this water really on the background because the speckles would sit on that too. If they fall outside of the water area, once your painting's dry, you'll just be able to tip those off. So don't prod at them or, you know, worse still scrape them with the brush. They will come off. You just need to let them sit there and then at the end you can tip them off. But wait until your picture is dry until you do that. So I've got my water on and what I'm going to do now is just pointing the pencil downwards just like this. They'll bleed very slightly and they'll stick to your paper. You want to do this in small areas at a time so that the paper is still wet. Then as I said, once it's dry, you want to turn it upside down and just tip off any excess speckles. But I think you'll agree, it looks really natural and really beautiful. So we've seen how to get a very natural speckled effect. What about if you've got something where you've actually got dots on it? So you actually need to make lots and lots of tiny little dots. It could be the center of a flower. It could be some pollen dust, something like that. Or again, it could be something like animal fur or even uh, somebody wearing a spotted top like mine that's far away in the distance. Anywhere that you need dots, I'm going to show you how to do that next. And you can get different sized dots depending on how sharp your pencil is. 
So I'm going to paint a lily petal here and we're going to get some spots in it. So I've drawn my lily petal and I'm going to put some water in the middle here. So I'm using paint just for speed. I'm going to take some colour down the centre now and allow it to bleed out. If you're wondering how to do these watercolour effects, I have lots of flower painting videos on this channel and there will be more to come. So don't forget to subscribe. You know you want to. So what we've done there is we've got that layer of wet paint. Again, we're going straight in now with some pencil. I'm going to make some dots on this petal now, some pollen dots, or sometimes they just have spots on. So we can go in like this. Now, I want you to understand the difference between going in with a pencil that's, you know, fairly blunt like this, and we can get these large spots. And then I'll pick one that's been sharpened, different color here, and you can see we get much tinier dots here. So you don't always need your pencil fully sharpened. If you're going on somewhere and you want these large spots to appear, then it's much better actually to blunt your pencil a bit first by rubbing it on some paper. So do let me know in the comments which one of these techniques you found the most useful or the most interesting. And before you leave this video, don't forget to pop into the video description. I've got lots of free stuff in there for you. I've got some free downloadable PDFs, including one about watercolour pencils. I've even got a free course you can take. You can also find out all about my Patreon subscriptions that are available if you'd like to follow along with all of my own paintings. I'll also link to a watercolour pencils course that I've got, which is all about flower painting. And and if you're watching this video when it's just come out, that one's on sale for a couple of weeks at the moment. If you enjoyed this video, but you need something a little bit more basic, you need just to understand how to use watercolour pencils in the most basic level before you move on to some of the techniques I've shown you in this video. I've got another video that I put out last week, which is all about the basics of watercolour pencils. So if you're still feeling a little bit like you don't quite know what they are, you can watch that video right now.